I first became interested in textiles when I was probably about 13, 14 at school. I think we did it as one of our units as design technology. And um, I was always obsessed with fashion and what all the pop stars I liked were wearing and the chance to kind of have a say in what I wore and how it was put together. Um, yeah, just massively intrigued me. So I, yeah, I think I enjoyed it at that stage and then went to take it on to become a GCSE. Um, and again, just every time I was designing or thinking about how to put together a wardrobe or clothing, I just really enjoyed it. So I persisted with it. Yeah, I took textiles for GCSE and it was just the most fun. And I was in the studio just kind of designing and I think we did screen printing, we did things like batik and just all these really wonderful elements to textiles. And it was just so creative, but really hands-on, which I really, I, which was similar to art, which I really enjoyed, but also, um, yeah, it was more physical. It felt like I could be a part of the end products that I was making um, and yeah, could wear it proudly after I'd done it. So I went from doing a GCSE and getting, getting a good grade in it and then taking it on to the diploma BTEC that I did at A-level at the same school that I was at. And yeah, it was all the, I wasn't sure whether I wanted to do a foundation or not, but it was all the cool fashion elements of a foundation that I really enjoyed. And I was so obsessed with fashion and what people were wearing and what new designers were creating and London Fashion Week. I just, I just wanted to be there and be a part of it. And so for me, that was almost like my foundation course. Um, because uh, I'd already made up my mind that fashion was the only part of it that I really wanted to go into. In hindsight, probably actually would have been really nice to sample a lot of other things as I've learned as I've gone throughout my career that I probably would have really benefited from sampling a lot, a lot more art subjects and design subjects. But at the time, no one could have said anything else to me. So I was like, fashion, fashion, that's it. Um, and yeah, I did this subsidiary diploma and um, came out with a distinction star as Nikki Simpson can testify I was not the best sewer and it wasn't my strength at all I loved the designing and I loved the creativity and I loved the curation of it and I was a bit confused about whether what that meant and I was like I want to be a designer I just want to design the clothes because I want to do all these cool sketches and have the big ideas and then someone else can sew them <laughs> but uh i kind of didn't realize that at the time the fashion design was a lot of pattern cutting a lot of sewing myself not somebody else and um yeah i then kind of sidestepped that idea and was like i don't know if i want to go to uni at all i don't know what i want to do um and it was a bit of a loss but actually Mrs. Simpson, who's gonna hate me calling her Mrs. Simpson still, <laughs> Simps. And uh, she encouraged me to take a photography course in Southampton Solent University, um, which is kind of like the creative side of Southampton. Um, and we, yeah, I hadn't taken a photo in my life no interest in it, hadn't even, well, I think I'd taken some photos of garments I'd made, um, I'd taken some pictures of my friend in them, and somehow, with my portfolio of nothing photography, <laughs> we cobbled together what I had, and I went to this interview, and they were like, okay, great, <laughs> I was like, cool, um, and got in, and because I felt like I was the underdog, the whole time I was so keen to work really hard I'm not I know I'm not naturally the best at everything I turn my hand to but I am the sort of person that will work at something until I'm the best and that was my attitude in this photography course I was like I felt like people knew more than I did and I didn't like that and I was like I need to I need to be the best here 
And so um, I did a lot of research and I got really nerdy about all the tech side of it. Um, just to the point where I think just being competitive made me want to do it. And I was like, I'm really enjoying it. And I'm like climbing somewhere and that felt good. And then it got to three years later, I was still loving it and loving what I was doing and it, how creative it was. And again, it was the, the curating and I would work with stylists and we kind of talked together about how we would create these images and they would just look beautiful at the end of the day or look weird or look just something and just made someone feel something or stopped, made someone stop and pay attention to. And um, yeah, so I did this three year, three year course and I came out with a first and a an award for an award for excellence um which I didn't I didn't expect and yeah I went on I was a bit of a loss when I finished and I didn't know where to go from that it's quite hard to get into any industry in the creative arts and earn money from it I knew London was the place to be luckily I live um not far too like too far out from London so I was able to tramp like get the train in um and I did a couple of internships and stuff throughout my university degree and before that as well so I'd had like a bit of a CV together I'd also worked as a shop assistant in our local top shop um this was how obsessed with fashion I was I was literally any moment of my life I was doing something fashion or was involved in the fashion industry and um yeah i did a couple of in small internships in different places different head offices and things and then i managed to land a job with a still life photographer at his studio in fulham and so i was commuting from i think it was like an hour and a half there an hour and a half back so it's like three hours a day for a very little salary um and i was like the third assistant and i did production coordinating for the studio as well it was kind of a weird role where you were kind of thrown into the very admin side of it initially um and just had to hit the floor running um but yeah it was a amazing eye-opening experience i was there for a year it was a very difficult and challenging role um and I think after a year, I was just like, there's something more for me here. I wanted to work more in fashion rather than still life. And so I, one of my photo heroes was Miles Aldridge. Um, from when I'd studied at uni, he was just one that I really, really admired and liked the work of. And I went to a talk of his at Photo London. And when I was there, I was just like, I went with my dad, we watched his talk, it was really interesting. And then when, um, yeah, after I'd seen this talk of him, felt really inspired. I sent him an email, I just found his email on his website online and was like, I really like your work. I'd really love to work, sorry, my battery. <laughs> um, I, I was, yeah, I sent him an email and I was like, I really like your work. I'd really love the opportunity to work for you in whatever capacity, whether that be a photographic assistant or any vacancy you had. And he actually responded quite soon after I sent the email and was like, I really like your CV, I'm actually looking for a studio manager. So my production coordinating background that I'd had for a year um, kind of got me in the door there, which I didn't expect. It was kind of a role that was half what I wanted to do, half wasn't, and felt like I got to the point, but I was like, actually it helped me get into the door with this photographer that I really admired. And I was like, you know what, I'll take whatever I can get at this stage. Um, and I was with him for three years and it meant like it was me and him I ran the business he was doing all his creative ideas and everything and I would put this into action for him and I would work with galleries to help sell his prints and I'd archive the whole entire studio which was an absolute mess when I arrived so I'd do the physical and digital archive because he shot on film it's all all in polar polaroids and negatives and everything and that was an eye-opening thing again because I'd worked mainly in digital before so this was like getting a whole new side of photography that I hadn't had before um, and yeah, I worked with him for three years and it was amazing. And then I did a bit of freelancing. I kind of got to the end of that role and I was like, there's nowhere more for me to go here. So I went off and did a bit of freelancing. And then while freelancing, I got picked up by uh, Nick Knight at Show Studio. And I worked with him for a little bit. And uh, yeah, again, very eye opening <laughs> and uh, an amazing studio to have been a part of and to see the inner workings of 
and yeah I just have wanted to have this knowledge of what these photographers did and these people that I admired did and how they got to where they got um and I feel incredibly lucky to have been able to witness that and be a part of that and um yeah and then at the moment I currently well because of the pandemic things changed slightly and at the moment I shoot for brands including ASOS um and yeah at the amazing it's an amazing network at the moment of different stylists photographers models and personalities and hairstylists makeup artists everything and it's yeah it's a real hub of creativity and I feel really fortunate to be in this position where I can shoot and be amongst wonderful people and just have fun at work I go in every day and it's like a massive party with music on in the studio dancing chat about life and take cool pictures and yeah it's it's pretty sweet it took it took some years to get there and for it to be this good but it um yeah I feel very fortunate and the fact that I, I kind of still am in fashion having known how tough it was and how many distractions and things there are for yeah for that not to happen I feel just very fortunate that I'm in an industry that I always wanted to be in and I get to have fun doing it basically with my mates <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah um yeah so I feel very very grateful to have um had someone like Simps who showed me a course I had no idea what it was I just wouldn't have even considered it um and yeah to recommend something that she thought was good for me and I really trusted her opinion I was like you know what I'll give it a go and if I don't like it then I don't have to do it anymore I just I'm gonna give it a go I'm gonna try it and see how it gets on and it was the best decision of my life because I do that now <laughs> so it obviously went well um but yeah, I, yeah, I f it was a, it was a weird path to get there and a, very unexpected, but I think I just, I think the best advice I could say or give is just to try, try things, give them a go, be open to different um, pathways, different types of creative fashion, textile career, um, because yeah, I just, wouldn't think I'd be where I am today at that stage. And I think if, I regret not doing a foundation course because I think I would have been, I would have really liked to have sampled a lot more stuff. Like in my spare time now, I do a lot more um, just random hobbies and tasks because I just, I like having a lot of creative outlets. And so just to have that year of being able to just do whatever with, a million different things and medias um, and a million different things and different mediums just to try them out I think I would have really enjoyed that and I don't know why I was in such a rush to get somewhere I didn't even know I was going um, and so yeah I guess um, my best advice would be to take your time and to be open to everything and try try different creative things because one thing that you'll kind of set your heart on actually it might be something else you didn't even know about that is going to be the career for you um and careers change along the way and so a lot of people i know who i studied photography with don't do photography anymore they do a lot of different things like people went on to do so many like i'm almost unusual that i'm still doing it <laughs> um because a lot of people went on just to go in different angles and pathways um but yeah so I think I think that would be my advice. I, don't, I hope that's good advice. <laughs>